Hi, everybody, and thank you for joining this talk about the scalable and general framework for optimization. My name is Pascal, and I will lead you through the slides today. The demo part will be given by Eugenia later on in this talk. We move forward to the agenda. First, I will talk about what is SAP Field Service Management, and then we dive right in into AI-based optimization. We have a strong emphasis today on the demo part, and in the end, I will talk about some interesting customer stories. So what is field service uh, management? So we are here at SAP Field Service Management. We are enabling and managing comprehensive field service processes. This includes service order planning, resource scheduling, or on-site service execution. Also, building in the field for technicians. You see, we are managing everything around service in the field. So basically, SAP field service management automates service processes and optimizes scheduling functionalities such that you can make the most use of the resources and to meet service level, level agreements. We see here the core capabilities of field service management. We have customer self-service, we have planning and dispatching, mobile service, and a few others. We have some advanced capabilities. We see them in the outer circle, like SAP Crowd Service. This is when you want to outsource some jobs to your partner. Let's say you are a company, you have internal technicians, but you also want to work with external ones, their crowd comes in. An important part is also integration to the back end. You see this on the left side and some, some more. For sure, each one of them could be uh, given a talk about, but today we are uh, going into planning and dispatching, more exactly into optimization. So what is AI-based optimization? We have technicians and we have some jobs and we need to plan them as much uh, as optimized as possible. So the motivation behind it, it behind this uh, general optimization framework is that customers reach out to us and they want to have no compromises on their business requirements. Furthermore, they want to automatically plan and they want to fulfill all their needs. This is why we decided to go with a general approach about optimization so that we can have an optimization framework and this optimization framework can consume code as configuration. Now I have to talk a bit about and explain why, what is code as configuration. In SAP Field Service Management, we call this the plugin. And in this plugin, it's basically a container which holds all the business requirements from the customer. At this point, I have to talk about a bit about our competitors in the field. Normally, other softwares in field service management, they have a user interface where you can go in, you have a slider, and you see features which are important for optimization. Let's say driving time. So you slide, for me, driving time is important, and you have another slider. Hey, I, I need to fill, fulfill all the contracts and so on. The advantage of this is that you have a nice uh, click and point interface where you can create your policy for optimization. But the problem is that this is quite limited. We went another approach. We have this code as configuration. With this, all the business requirements uh, can be met. So this is the key differentiator of our, our optimization approach compared to other um, competitors. Let's go into how the optimization is working. Basically, optimization needs a trigger. When should it be optimized? Let's say you want to go optimize overnight, so the planner can go to sleep, and in the morning, he wakes up and he opens uh, field service management and he sees the scheduled jobs for the technicians. For sure, you need to give 
to the optimizers of jobs and technicians, also the planning horizon. You want to plan maybe starting on Monday for the next week, or you want to plan from today uh, till the end of the week. That's totally up to your business. The second ingredient is the plugin. And here, this is really important for us because this contains really the policy in which you want to optimize as a customer. For sure, the third but not least ingredient is the road network with speed information. So normally technicians, they use cars, so it's highly important to use just road networks. We feed this all to the auto scheduler and after the auto scheduler has done his job, the planner has a nice view and sees the optimization um, or sees the outcome of the optimization in form of a schedule. What do we offer uh, on planning modes in field service management? We, all, we offer manual planning, we offer assisted planning, and we offer also fully automatic planning. So manual planning is supported by an intuitive click and point interface, and assisted planning um, is supported by uh, artificial intelligence. So the dispatcher can leverage their AI to best plan the technician. We will this late see later on uh, in a demo. This is called best matching technician. When we go to the fully automated planning, we have a whole bunch of technicians, a whole bunch of jobs, and this will be optimized together so that we end up overall with a global optimization. Now, we have to talk about this low cost and plugin because this is so important for our optimization. What we are normally doing is we are going to the customer, we are talking about the customer about optimization, and we are coming up with a ranking system. You see this on the right side here. We see, for example, that the second uh, line fixed appointment, or we see further down driving time. So we rank them with, by importance. You see for this customer, fixed appointment, which means that you have to be at a specific customer at a specific time, because you might agree on the time, is more important than driving time. What we afterwards do, we mathematically convert this into a, a plugin. And this is on a local basis. You see this on the, on the bottom on the page. So we write Java code, and this Java code can then be consumed by this general uh, optimization framework. So really, the company can choose what optimization they what, what optimization is best for them, and we help them to develop the plugin in a local basis. In the end, we want that the customer can realize all the business requirement on optimization. We want to fully tailor to the needs of the customer, and for sure, more than one policy is um, is uh, doable. So we have more than one plugin uh, for a specific customer because it might be that he has maintenance worker in the field and also repair worker, and they have diff totally different uh, requirements on uh, scheduling. With this, we uh, already come to the demo part, and I'm really happy to have Eugenia here today to show us the demo in the product. Hello, everyone. Thanks for the introduction, Pascal. My name is Eugenia Rakcheva and I'm a product owner for automated scheduling and re-optimization. And I cannot just wait to jump into the system and show you how it's working. I'm landing on the planning board just before the start of the workday of technicians. And we want to um, execute the automatic planning so that when the guys come to work, their schedule is already organized. So the white spaces are the working times as defined by the work time pattern of each technician, right? So my technicians here in the system share the same work time pattern. So our rule uh, was scheduled to run uh, for shortly before nine. And now um, the schedule should be appearing on the board. You can see that the first jobs are appearing on the board, so it starts filling gradually.
what you also see is that the board is starting to fill from this blue line. This blue line is the current moment. There are our technicians and there are jobs that are being scheduled. Before I jump in to the explanation of the schedule and why, for example, those jobs are being scheduled for the same t to start for the, uh, at the same time, um, I would love to draw your attention to those stripes at the bottom of, of the jobs. You see that when the jobs are uh, initially assigned, they have this red stripe, and then it gradually turns green as the scheduling proceeds. So let us open a job. You see that the status is assigned. Now, let's look at the job with a green stripe at the bottom. And you will see that the status is released. So what does it mean? Um, assignment means that we found the, um, the technician to perform a job according to uh, the criteria that are specified in the plugins. Um, I guess Pascal explained you the notion of plugins, right? So um, you see that the um, assignments are um, turning into released jobs. And what it means is that once we are done scheduling, so once we found the technician to perform the job, we're pushing this job directly to their mobile application. So once the auto scheduler is uh, secure that they, uh, the technician would be the one performing the job, so the uh, assignment is uh, final, uh, it's being automatically pushed uh, by setting the status released uh, to the mobile application of technician. And now we can take a look while the auto scheduler finishes its job, we can take a look at the uh, schedule itself. So you see that there are some jobs that are being scheduled to run in parallel. Um, so Pascal uh, mentioned already the plugins, um, right? And that uh, this is a container for configuration logic, where you basically can specify whatever is relevant for your planning. All of those criteria will be cons considered. So what we did with the plugin that I'm using right now, we said that every job that is assigned to, <clears throat> sorry, every job that belongs um, to the same piece of machinery, to the same piece of equipment, should be assigned to the same technician for the same point in time, um, so that all uh, jobs should be started um, simultaneously. And what you see here as well, we have a couple of jobs um, for the equipment. Uh, this is the ID of our equipment, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have a couple of jobs um, that are of type repair, maintenance, uh, sorry, warranty, and maintenance. And this only makes sense that you glue um, all of those jobs together because once you have um, once you have to take the uh, machine apart, for example, to perform the repair, you can as well already take care of the maintenance job and uh, uh, maybe um, uh, do the inspection that you need to do or you need to perform um, um, as a warranty um, obligation, right? And as you can see, the longer job defines the duration of the slot that the jobs are assigned to. And we have a similar situation here for Beat, where uh, Beat is working on a lift, uh, so elevator, uh, right? And those two jobs are assigned to Beat to start simultaneously. And one of uh, the additional pieces that I would love to draw your attention to, which is specific to our plugin uh, that we're using here, is um, that we go beyond the work time, um, the, the, the uh, work day end as defined by the work time pattern. Um, you can see it clearly in here, this grayish area is the non-working time. So within this plugin, we actually defined uh, this rule that um, if it is possible to go beyond, so um, 
uh, if there, uh, we can accommodate another job to be performed by a technician uh, to start within a day, it should be fine to push the constraint of the end of the workday if needed. So what the system is doing actually is that it schedules the job to start within the working time and it ends a little bit outside of the working time. And this is exactly one of the rules that we want to have. So this is uh, something to showcase this scenario. Now we have our day scheduled, but what happens if we have something that might potentially compromise the schedule? For example, there is a very important job that needs to be accommodated in the next couple of days, or uh, there is a, God forbid, a traffic accident that technician is, is uh, um, wrapped up in. So what do we do? Um, we already had our scheduled run. So what auto scheduler can do as well is um, react to events. So if there is, for example, event an event of a very important job being created, let's create one. Then there will be a rescheduling triggered. We will say it's of high priority. Now, um, we're looking at the earliest start and end date to define the duration. So when we define those dates, it's not the dates when the job will be performed. It's actually uh, the dates that define how long the job will take. Uh, and it's the delta before the end and the start. So let's say it will start at 9. And take three hours to perform. And it will be due on the 30th. We have the ID of the job. And you see that it directly lands in the backlog. And this stripe indicates that the system is working and reacts to it. And you see that the job has disappeared from the backlog. And in the meantime, there are already changes happening in the schedule. So that the system rearranges the schedule for the technician who will take it. Okay, so we can see that no other technicians on the team uh, would be affected. It's just Christina who will have to take an additional job. And other uh, jobs that were affected by it are reorganized because this one is very important and has to be performed soon. What we also have as a co common use case is that um, some customers don't want to optimize on a regular basis, for example, nightly or before the start of the workday. What they'd rather doing uh, is scheduling of jobs individually as they come in. For example, some customers have call centers operating and call center agents take the jobs, uh, um, take the um, information from the customer to create jobs. And those jobs are being assigned to technicians as they are getting replicated to field service management. So let us check this scenario. And we have the ID of the job. That's it. It landed in the backlog directly. And you see that the system is processing. And you see that the job has disappeared from the backlog 
and rather it was scheduled somewhere. Let us expand the schedule and we will see that it was assigned to Christina here to be performed um, on Thursday, right at the start of the workday. And it was simply assigned to Christina because uh, Christina is the one who is working in this region and would have um, the shortest driving time to the job. Now, what we saw already is how the autom um, automated scheduling is working with internal technicians, so in-house technicians, that is your own workforce. Now, let us consider a scenario that you want to use external subcontractors, for example, so external crowd partners to offload some work. Now, let us go to the crowd workforce UI. And we have all of our crowd partners listed here. So we will go to this one and enable Maxi as one of the crowd technicians who will be helping us. So now Maxi will be appearing on the board as well, of course, with no assignments. There you go, there is our Maxi. And let's, cons uh, let's um, imagine that we would have scheduled all jobs previously already considering maxi so um, i will go to the trigger i will go to configurations that define um, when we trigger the job um, which plugin so which um, scheduling policy is applied um, which um, time um, horizon should be planned so in this case it was two days right and i will add the crowd resources so that's how our configuration sdk um, the so-called business rules look like we see here um, the administrative information names and codes we see the trigger that in this case it's scheduled right we see um, some authorization information and here at the bottom we see how the plugin is defined so uh, we see the start and end we're adding 20 hours now um, so this is the planning horizon right um, we see a parameter do we want to release on schedule or not so do we want to immediately push to the technicians applications the push the schedule or not um, i switched it to false because for the crowd you first want to allow the crowd technician to accept or reject the job right then we define the partitioning strategy so which business units are affected right and we define do we want to include crowd persons uh, or individual persons uh, or individual uh, in internal technicians sorry uh, yes or no so internal technicians uh, are the in-house uh, technicians so your own workforce and the crowd technicians are the um, crowd workforce and we're going to go ahead and execute it and when we execute it what we grabbing in terms of the jobs are all of the jobs that are not yet closed so the jobs that um, have been assigned already to technicians but not yet closed so those will be re assigned as well and let us focus on um, the partition Stuttgart so this is the team working in the geographical area of South Germany Stuttgart and we will see how uh, the schedule proceeds the scheduling proceeds we see the indication that the system is running and you see already that there are overlaps happening so those are the new assignments and um, um, how you can identify them is that they're not being released so here we have the red stripe which will remain red or purple purple is the change in the status so it's been modified right And you see that the entire partition schedule is being revamped. 
to accommodate this new technician, Maxi. And we're only scheduling for 20 hours. So the jobs for the next day will be removed and then they will be sent to the planning round prior to the day start. Uh, we have assigned some jobs to Maxi using auto scheduler. And now uh, Maxi will receive emails for each individual jobs um, through which the, uh, he can accept or reject those assignments. Now let's jump into the mailbox and we see that it already starts um, triggering. The system already triggers some emails. They will be coming um, one by one. We're not going to wait for all of them to arrive. Let's just go ahead and reject. And we see that this is an assignment 803 and it was scheduled for the 22nd of September. We see that it has been rejected. And you see that the assignment has disappeared from the schedule, right? So, um, and where did it go? It went back to the backlog. There you go. And uh, let's give Maxi the chance to accept and reject his assignments. And now uh, we will um, jump into the manual planning scenario. So Pascal already mentioned to you that we um, not only support uh, the completely automated planning where no dispatcher is needed, so no human interaction with the system is necessary. We also support uh, the, uh, the concept of plugins for the semi-automated planning. So that is the scenario where dispatcher is doing the planning manually, but needs a little bit of help uh, finding uh, technicians to perform um, individual jobs. So now let's trigger the uh, best matching technician feature to see how the planner would get support um, from the system to select the um, technicians. Let's go to today. And what we will see is that Maxi will not be offered. So we have all of the technicians occupied, therefore um, we have to include book technicians. And let's take a look at skills blacklist in here. So we had a number of plugins um, here in the system. And you see that the plugin offers um, multiple technicians from this team, but not Maxi. And that is how the um, automated um, scheduling framework supports both um, automated and semi-automated or assisted planning. So we saw the scheduled optimization, we saw um, re-optimization throughout the day, intraday planning as a reaction to a event. We saw scheduling of an individual job and we saw using the plugins concept, the framework in order to get help when, do, when doing manual planning with the best, uh, best matching technician feature. Thank you very much. That was a great fun and back to you, Pascal. Thank you very much, Eugenia, for showing us the optimizer in action. It was quite a nice demo. In the meantime, there were reports created in the system, and I pulled one of these reports out so that we can explain what is happening during optimization. So these, are, these rather technical reports can be used to understand what is happening in the optimization, and we can react on these reports to do some action, maybe change the plugin, maybe change the planning horizon, or maybe increase the workload for this area. We see that we scheduled in Germany. We can now zoom in to these 30 scheduled jobs, and we end up in the region of Stuttgart. Here we have one, two, three technicians working. These are indicated by the three different colors. Now we are interested in 
one of these technicians, so we have a closer look. We see that this technician starts close to, St to Stuttgart and moves down to the north during the day. Now, why the optimizer foresees for him to start in the morning at this job? This can be answered by clicking on this info button. This info button opens a dialogue window and in this dialogue window, we see important messages. For example, we have the name of the technician, which is Anthony. Anthony, uh, we, we know him from before. He was um, introduced by Eugenia in the demo. We see that for the first job in the morning, which, start, which starts at 8.50, he received during optimization a high score. And why did he receive such a high score? This can be viewed in the message down here. So this message comes straight from this custom plugin and it tells us at which iteration this job was assigned. So this is how important this job is. And it's, it has other messages which then sum up to the score up here. So we have an explanation why this job was chosen and we can now react on it. For example, we have a customer and this customer, uh, they have maintenance work, a lot of maintenance work, and most of the maintenance work uh, in the earlier days was planned in the afternoon. However, a lot of maintenance work was missed because of that, because other jobs uh, were always more important, received, perceived, uh, but the customer lost a lot of money because of this maintenance work missed. So what we ensured in the plugin that for this customer, we schedule always as a first job in the morning a maintenance work, and then afterwards we have a nice route during the day covering other jobs like repairs or uh, or corrective actions and so on. Let's zoom out a bit and we have the overview over the whole map here. We can deselect scheduled jobs, we can select non-scheduled jobs and we see we missed out on quite some jobs, 49 in total uh, during this optimization round and we have now a closer look on this missed out uh, jobs. We see up here that a technician is working. This is the technician, Christina, and she does not have enough capacity to, all, to, to do all these jobs. So here we can react on this missed out opportunities by including maybe uh, a, a, a longer planning horizon, or we can include the crowd so that these jobs can be outsourced uh, to other um, external technicians. These technical reports go in the direction of explainable artificial intelligence. So they open up this black box of optimization to an understandable way such that we can react now uh, on, on these uh, reports by maybe changing the plugin or as we see by including crowd technician. This concludes my talk about the optimization reports and I now go back to the slide deck. With this, we move to some interesting customer stories. We brought you uh, three different customers. We have a big elevator company uh, on the left side. We have in the middle a battery company. And on the right side, we have company from the utility sector. You see some graphs there. You see what they are optimizing today. And after the full rollout on the bottom, we see how many jobs they will be optimizing per year uh, after the full rollout. First, to the left side, to, the, to one of the biggest elevator company uh, in the world. So this company has normal technicians in the field and these technicians moving around um, in, in, a, in, a, in a small area. Uh, we optimize them nightly, so each night they are optimized for the next day, so we can react to changes uh, on previous days. However, they also encounter entrapments inside an elevator. 
So right away, somebody needs to be dispatched to this elevator to help the people, uh, the entrapped people. This signals to FSM, hey, there is an entrapment. We need to go right away to this really important job. And from this job on, after, he has a nice route to go along because we do an optimization intraday. However, we do not disturb the other technicians um, uh, during this optimization, which work close to him in this area. The specialty what they are having is that they are optimizing for special technicians. What this means is they are highly skilled and they are doing um, important work. So um, they are optimized for starting Monday to the whole week, next week, because they need to book hotels and to make, they make, uh, they have to organize their trips. Now these specialized technicians, they need sometimes help uh, from the other technicians in the field for the nor from the normal technicians. So one specialty is that during the day, both technicians start at a different location and the specialized technician goes to a job, let's say at two o'clock and we optimize in a way that another technician meets him at two o'clock at the same location and afterwards they're moving along their separate ways. We call this um, dynamic team assembly. We can move on to a totally different use case, uh, to the battery use case. This is a customer mostly working in India. And the problem of this customer is that they have to react really quickly uh, on, a, on, on, on jobs because a battery has to change as soon as possible. There, sometimes you have batteries in a hospital and when they face power outages, they need to have this battery ready. So this is quite important for them to move quickly. These technicians, they moving around by, by scooter. So uh, they, they, they are reacting quickly. And what we, are, what we are having for them, we having live location on. So they have the field service management app they have live location on. So we know where they are during the day. And when a job comes in from the back end to FSM, we schedule right away to a technician. And this technician receives on the phone notification, hey, close to my location, there is a job, I should go. He can say yes, accept, or no, I have other things to do, so reject. So he will be on an exclusive, uh, he'll be excluded from the, from the next optimization. He will be on a red list. Afterwards, this job goes to the optimizer again, and the optimizer sends to the next um, person who is the next closest uh, to this location, such that he can accept or reject, and so on. So you see, we have a lot of we have a, have a lot of changes during the day, and we need to react quickly for this customer. Then to the last customer, the utility sector is located in Switzerland, so they went live in September this year. And with the full rollout, uh, they, they will reach some thousand jobs per year. What they required is that for some jobs at the same uh, house, they should all be grouped together. And sometimes they start in a house at the second part of the day, and they need to be going back in the next day, and the same technician needs to go back. So you see, we have quite a lot of different requirements from the customers and um, we can fulfill this, uh, these requirements together with the cost plugin. This concludes my talk about um, this general framework of optimization. Feel free to reach out to me and also to Eugenia. Uh, both of us, Eugenia and me, thank you very much. We also thank our teams because without our teams, and without the consultants in the field, this would never have been possible to set up. Thank you very much and have a nice day.